Right, Monday morning and a few people have asked us to show an actual cylinder um, and how the pipes up and how we pipe them up um, with a bit more detail than, uh, than what I've done in other videos. So I'm going to show you this one. So we're in a loft space. Um, we've obviously, first consideration is the strength of the loft space. Luckily this house has got solid brick walls that run all the way up it from ground level to this um, all the way up to this loft space and there's like a T that shoots off towards the bathroom that again runs all the way downstairs. Now I always get a structural engineer to uh, sense check what I say. So what I'll do is I'll draw it out and take photos, send it off to our structural engineer and they will then um, send back the loadings and, and what any, any remedial work that is required for us to make sure it is strong enough, we will do. In this situation, we were lucky enough to, to have enough strength. I always try and install cylinders in alternative locations. I don't like them in lofts, but sometimes needs must. This is a terrace property um, where space is limited and, and this, this loft space is a decent size. So there you go. So just a quick overview, we've got a five kilowatt heat pump. This house is having new double glazing. It's having the loft insulated. It's having some internal wall insulation um full new wet system new radiators like i said a five kilowatt heat pump which is plenty big enough for this property it's the it's it's something that heating engineers struggle to get their head around when they're used to doing gas boilers the fact that a, a three bed terrace house only needs i think the heat loss on this is like 3.9 kilowatts or something like that so the five kilowatt heat pumps plenty big enough um to uh produce enough hot water and heating for the customer um, and, and that is another factor that people need to consider as heat losses get lower and lower your hot water requirement and your recovery rate on your cylinder um, needs to be considered depending on the occupancy if you're putting in you know your heat losses are getting down towards three three kilowatts and you put a three 3.5 kilowatt heat pump in the, the problem is with some manufacturers they won't give the output at um, including defrost and things like that. So when the weather gets really stinky and cold, if the customer needs lots of hot water and heating and it's defrosting a lot, that's when you can see the death spiral happen. So that's what you need to be super careful of when we're getting down to these lower outputs um, of heat pump. Anyway, so we've got a plenty chunky enough heat pump that can modulate down low enough as well so that's our balance balance point essentially we've we, we've got that right in the loft here i've got 200 liter slimline cylinder and i've got a 50 liter volumizer on it so i'll just point out literally the that the pipe run itself so you get get what i'm talking about so essentially the flow pipe so this is this look at my finger in there that is the flow from the heat pump and that runs up to our blimo valve there then off the bottom, that flow then heads off towards the central heating system. So that goes to the radiators. Now, what happens is the return from the radiators comes through the volumizer, okay, and then tees in to the return back to the heat pump. So it's essentially an open loop system. And all we've done is we've added 50 liters of volume to guarantee our minimum system volume on the return. There's no loss of efficiency with this layout. Sticking a volumizer on the return doesn't drop efficiency. The only thing that you could argue is there's a bit of heat loss from that volumizer, but as I've always said in the past, the square root of nothing. So yeah, essentially that's it. That is your layout. Um, and that is our preferred method in nine out of 10 heat pump setups, open loop, Volumizer on the return, that's it. Um, I will show you, um, I'll, do, I'll do some other videos on uh, four pipe buffer arrangements that we have done in the past, which in certain situations makes complete sense. Um, you know, especially hybrid systems and things like that. Sometimes we've got to have a buffer in. Um, and I'll also sh show you a three pipe buffer arrangement, which is like our next step away from this. So this is, we always try and do this. And then the three pipe arrangement is our second option. Four pipe buffer arrangement is the third option. But there you go. That is a typical, um, typical setup.